Hello everyone, this is Swaroop here. In this video, we'll talk about rsync. rsync is a wonderful tool for copying files from one place to another place in the same machine or in a different machine. It is especially useful for synchronizing files between two computers or for performing backups. If you have never heard of rsync before, or if you have never used it before, watch till the end of this video and I'm pretty sure you'll find this quite useful. Before we start looking at the examples of rsync, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future videos. Let's start with a simple use case. I have two folders here on the right, the source folder and the destination folder. And as you can see, the source folder has several types of files in here and the destination folder is right now empty. Let's start with the text file here, hello.txt. I want to copy this file from the source directory into the destination directory. Well, we can use cp for that to copy, but this tutorial is about rsync, so we'll do that with rsync. So here on the terminal, I am in the source directory, as you can see, and I want to sync this file hello.txt into the destination directory. Now the syntax for rsync is quite similar to cp. So you just say rsync source and the destination. So the source here is hello.txt because I'm already in the directory and the destination would be the destination folder. And that's it. You give the source directory and the destination directory and we run it. And you can see the hello.txt file got copied. Pretty simple. But if you can see, we did not get any output when this transfer happened. So rsync has an option called verbose with which you can get some more output. So if I tack on the dash v flank, you can see we get some output uh, saying what's the file name, how many bytes were sent, how many bytes were received, and the total size, etc. So all of this information gets printed when we use the verbose flag. So we'll continue using the verbose flag for the rest of this tutorial. Now, how is it different from using just a plain copy? The advantage of using rsync is that it can perform smart copy. That is, it can copy files when it sees that there's a change between the source and destination. If it's the exact same file, then rsync will just skip it. So if I run this command, what we should expect to see is that because the hello.txt file is already there, nothing should happen. So if we run this, you can see it has sent 61 kilobytes which is not what we were expecting. So what's going on here? Well, the thing is by default, rsync uses timestamps to determine if the file has changed or not. So if I look at the timestamp of this hello.txt file here, it has been updated uh, October 5th at 10.30 p.m. Now, if I look at the same file on the destination side, the timestamp is just right now, which is when I ran this program. So that's why rsync thinks it's a different file, even though the content is exactly the same. So there are two ways in which we can avoid this problem. First is by having rsync look at the content of the file instead of the timestamps, or the other option is where we ask rsync to sync the timestamp itself. So let's look at the first option where we tell rsync to look at the content of the file instead of the timestamp. So the way you do that is by passing a flag dash C, C for checksum. I remember it as C for content, but whichever works for you. So the way we do that is again, we run the same command as before, but we just add on the flag dash C. So I'll just put that over here. Now with dash C, it looks at the checksum of the file. So it calculates the checksum on the source file and the destination file. And because it's the exact same checksum, it will not transfer anything. Now, if I run this, we will see that it only sent 60 bytes around and in instead of the 61 kilobytes like it did before. So this is the advantage that we get with rsync. So by adding this flag dash C, we can make rsync send the files across only when there is a change between the source and the destination. Now, the other way we can get around the timestamps problem is by syncing the timestamp itself. That is, the new file in the destination directory will also have the exact same timestamp as the source file. Now, the way we would do that is by passing the flag dash T, so T for timestamp. 
So when we're passing the dash T flag, our sync now syncs not only the content, but also the timestamp as well. Now, if we run this, uh, because it's the first time we are running with dash T, it will sync the entire file. But now if I look at the timestamp in the destination, we can see it's the exact same time as our source directory. So this way, rsync has synced the timestamp across. And now if we try to do rsync again, because the timestamps are the same and by default rsync checks for the timestamp, it doesn't transfer any data over and you can see it has only sent 44 bytes. So we have talked about two flags so far, the dash T and the dash C, through which we can perform a smart copy using rsync. Next, let's try to copy a directory. So I have a folder here, Vim sorting, uh, which has a bunch of files inside and a couple of other directories as well uh, under it. Now I want to sync this folder into the destination directory. What will I do? Well, we can do the exact same thing as what we have done so far. But alas, it says skipping directory. So rsync by default does not sync any directories. It is similar to how copy works as well. By default, it wouldn't copy directories. So we have to pass in an extra flag to say recurse into the directories as well. So the way we do that is by passing the flag dash r, r for recursive. So if we pass in that flag, we can see all these files have been synced across and this is the total number of bytes that have been sent to the directory. And as you can see, the Vim sorting folder has been created in the destination folder. And because we have synced the timestamps as well, when I try to run rsync again, we'll see that the files are not sent again. It's just the 471 bytes that we see. We can see here that we're passing two flags, T and R, uh, for recursive and for timestamp syncing. Usually for rsync, we have to pass in a few other flags as well to preserve the permissions, the, to preserve the users and the group information, etc. For this, you'd be passing in a lot of flags all the time. To keep this simple, rsync actually provides a, a simpler flag, which is dash A. I like to think of dash A as the all flag, but it's actually archive mode. When I run this, we will get the exact same thing. Uh, but because I've already synced the folder, you will not really see any output here. So let me just delete this file for once. Now, if I try to sync this over again, we will see that it will sync the entire folder into the destination directory. So that's how we can use the archive mode flag. So next we'll talk about the dry run mode. So a lot of times, we would be syncing files of huge volume and a huge number of files from one place to another place. Uh, whenever this happens, it would be good to make sure that we're syncing it to the right place rather than finding it out after an hour that you've synced it to the wrong directory. So to help with this, rsync has the dry run flag, which shows you what will be synced when we run that command without actually syncing the files across. So this is a great time saver and it's something you should always run before uh, actually syncing some files. Let me clear this and let me delete this directory one more time. Now, when we sync Vim sorting directory again, we know that the entire folder has to be synced. So let's try to do the same, but this time by passing in the dry run flag. So when we pass in the dry run flag, rsync will just show us the output as needed. So you just add the dry run flag to the command and run it. And it shows that these are all the files that will be synced. But if you see the actual data that is sent is just 536 bytes. So it hasn't synced all these files. It just shows that this would be what gets synced. And to show that this is indeed a dry run output, uh, you can even see the dry run indication here. Now, if this looks good, then we can actually go ahead and run the same command by deleting the dry run option. Now, when we run this, obviously the entire folder gets synced as we expect. 
Hi, Swarup from the future here. I plan to make one single video of rsync but this already has come to 10 minutes so I have decided to stop this one here and we'll continue in the next video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.